Educate Hopkinton hosted a public forum regarding town growth and development. EHOP President Nanda Barker Hook started off by presenting some of the facts about town growth. By population growth, Hopkinton is ranked among the state's most rapidly growing towns for more than 20 years. Um, and this slide is showing our population growth over time from all the way back to 1930. Um, you can see this particular uptick in 1990 was quite dramatic in the 90s, and it's actually not um, as dramatic at, at this point compared to the 90s. Um, our current population, this was based on information from the clerk's office at the end of uh, 2017, was just under 17,000 people. And that number actually exceeds the projection that the Massachusetts um, Area Planning Council Council was projecting for 2020. Our town, in terms of population, has grown by 13.5% since 2010. And there's a lot in the works. There's many more um, units to be added, housing developments. Um, so this is just a quick list of some of them that are in the pipeline. 662 units are in the pipeline, soon to have um, occupancy permits. This number is sort of fluid. It seems like it's always growing. So uh, this is 92 new students have enrolled in our schools since September 2017. And that's the number that was given to us by the superintendent's office February 27th. Town manager Norman Kumalo spoke on the reasoning behind the recent tax increases. I think what we're seeing is a confluence of several factors. Number one, the local economy. And in assessing the local economy, I also include the growth in town. Secondly, the strategic decisions that this town has carefully made in the past, making wonderful investments, for example, in our new elementary school, the Marathon School, uh, the DPW facility, uh, as well as the renovated library. And uh, thirdly, part of the increase that we're seeing in the budget is a result of a careful and thoughtful assessment of emerging and changing needs in the community. The school community, board of selectmen, fire department, each and every one of these departments has gone through a very careful assessment of these needs. They do change. And last but not least, we may all do this work. Review the economy. Review the strategic decisions made in the past. Look at the emerging trends. There are needs that we cannot anticipate with all that planning. Hopkinton Director of Operations Elaine Lazarus spoke about growth and development trends. So I think laying that planning groundwork by those people who were here in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, really put that into motion and that was a good thing. And as time went along, those bylaws were tweaked and updated as new people came in and there were new ideas and new challenges. One of the other things um, about growth and development was during this t same time period, there was a real desire to grow the commercial base along with the residential. There was a desire to keep that balance and a realization that without the commercial building along with the residential, that the burden on the residential taxpayers would become too low. <coughs> and so during this time period, there was also a great deal of development along South Street. Uh, R&D facilities at EMC, and that helped to balance the residential growth at the same time, and that has continued to grow as well. Hopkinton Planning Board Chairman John Ferrari spoke about some of the most recent housing trends in town. I think where we're going is so much of the town growth that you're seeing in these numbers, especially since 2010, or the uh, garden apartment, which are not the what we may think of as garden apartments, multifamily uh, townhouses that, you know, the, 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 what's going on around town now. With the changes in the bylaws that we instituted, that is going away as long as we are above the 10% number for affordable housing. So if you don't remember, uh, we put a restriction on it at town meeting about two years ago. A year ago? 
uh, seems so long ago. So development is now going to come mostly on the residential side from single family housing. What is happening now, which we're beginning to see a little bit of, is maybe some sites that we thought were not developable because they didn't have street access. I think if, if the housing market continues to increase, you're going to see developers looking at a parcel, maybe buying the street frontage with a house, tearing it down to give them the ability to put a road through. So you might start seeing stuff like that. But I think the large amount of growth that we're seeing is, is not going to increase based on the change we made in the Garden Department regulations. To view the full EHA public forum, head over to our website, hcam.tv, or youtube.com slash hcamtv.